Hi, welcome to the BNG Manager demo. This is part two where we're going to cover the configuration menus. If you didn't already see it, you should look at part one as well, which covers the general overview, operations, and troubleshooting capabilities. The BNG Manager is a web-based management platform that manages all of the virtual BNGs within your network. Uh, in addition to collecting operational telemetry and being able to, to manage the environments and see what's going on, it also offers some advanced troubleshooting tools that your support organization uh, can use without having to have CLI access to the routers themselves. We also support REST APIs for further automation. In today's discussion demo, we're going to look at the configuration menus, uh, which include building your QoS profiles, uh, setting up routing, ACLs, and much more. Our customers really like the BNG Manager for its power, ease of use, and how it really helps them manage their network. Uh, so once again, uh, if you log into the BNG Manager, you can see a list of all of the BNGs uh, across your network, and uh, even by groups for HA. In this case, we have one in our lab, and I'm going to click on that to um, move into its uh, operation screen. This is the operational summary. Uh, again, we're going to focus on the configuration menu for this tool. If you have not already seen the other video, we cover the operation summary and access and network uh, menu, as well as uh, debug console and some of the other capabilities of the BNG Manager. The configuration menu allows you to configure most of the uh, functionality within the BNG directly through the BNG Manager. Now there are still some capabilities that can only be done from the uh, CLI, uh, but uh, using the uh, menu structure allows you to get uh, a much better head start uh, with some of the more common uh, configuration capabilities, but there is more. Uh, the interface uh, tab allows you to configure your interfaces. Um, you have the ability, uh, let's say, within uh, some of the interfaces that have been uh, physically passed uh, to the software, uh, we can see those. We can create sub-interfaces, uh, both Q&Q &Q and dot one q You can give the uh, interface ID, uh, whether it's going to be uh, part of the NAT uh, or not, or even a VRF. We also have the ability to uh, create Ethernet trunks and you can see the uh, you know, which members you want to put in there. If it's going to be you know a static uh, uh, trunk or uh, LACP, uh, and how you're going to balance those the interfaces. So a lot of capabilities uh, right there within the interface config menu. Next one is uh, ACL for your uh, stateless firewall uh, rules. Uh, here we've got one set up for. Uh, a VoIP server off the management network. Uh, you can create uh, you know, lots of different uh, rules, as many as you want, and uh, set the priorities um, you know, by range, uh, different uh, uh, ports, uh, whatever you, you know, need to either allow if you're denying most uh, or to uh, deny if it's a particular um, network uh, that you need to uh, protect. Uh, you can also set profiles for your ACLs, which allows you to combine uh, different uh, actual ACL rules into a, a single profile for input and output. And uh, you can see the submenu for that. You can select which one you want for your input, which one you want for your output, which may be slightly different in your different profiles. We do support ACLs for uh, IPv6, uh, but those need to be done in the CLI card. Looking at uh, QoS, obviously QoS for subscribers is one of the most important things a, a broadband network gateway um, does. And we build our QoS profiles up uh, first by identifying the type of traffic. Um, so here we can uh, say, for instance, all traffic uh, for that, uh, we'll use that later. Uh, and then here, internal VoIP traffic uh, output and input. Uh, we'll use that uh, separately uh, for our internal voice over IP service to make sure that we can give it uh, some uh, better behavior and uh, higher QoS. 
Uh, here we've set a couple rules. Uh, QoS behaviors is what we call them. Uh, and first one's a rate limit of 20 meg. Next one's a 2 meg, 500K. And then we've also set up a, a behavior for our voice over IP priority queue. In this queue here, which we'll take a look at, we've actually set um, the bandwidth to very high, and we're actually using a express forwarding queue to make sure that that traffic gets through uh, even during a congested period so that your voice over IP service uh, works very well even during times of uh, heavy Netflix streaming and, and other things that your customers may be doing. We then take those behaviors and uh, group them into policies. Uh, so here we can see a policy 20 meg uh, that we've associated with the network behavior in QoS for the 20 meg policy. Uh, we can apply that to a particular type of traffic if we want. In this case, we're not going to. Uh, and we can you know, set the behavior, uh, we can set additional behavior. So in this case, we've got the rate limit of 20 already assigned. And then the last step is to take those policies, which are one way, and put them into profiles so that they're, they're two way and can be used uh, by radius or local authentication to be applied to a customer. So here's our 20 meg profile. You can say we've got our input policy, our output policy, which of course can be different. And uh, for instance, if you wanted an asymmetric rule, you could have uh, you know, 2 meg upload and 20 meg download. Um, those would be possible. The next menu is our uh, AAA, uh, so authorization, authentication, and accounting. Now we do support and primarily use Radius for AAA, but we also uh, support uh, local accounting and uh, authorization. And that's actually what we've done for our lab uh, environment. So we've set it up a, uh, a rule for local authentication and uh, we've defined uh, some of the um, specific attributes around it and uh, what the, the formats are, etc. Uh, we've done the same for authorization. Uh, so we've got authorization templates. Uh, and so when a, uh, a user comes in with a particular authorization template, we can uh, decide which profiles are going to be used and whether they're going to be part of the CGNet or going to get uh, public IP uh, space. Similarly with accounting, we can define uh, what our formats are for accounting and whether that's going to be local or off to radius uh, different types of uh, accounting attributes. And then lastly is our local subscriber database. Now normally this will be in your radius, but you do have the option to have uh, local subscribers in addition to your radius subscribers. And the BNG can authorize against both uh, in the order that you uh, desire. This can be helpful for maybe your network engineers working remotely, want to still be able to authenticate onto the BNG, uh, and in the case of uh, maybe even Radius being uh, unavailable. Uh, which brings us to Radius. Uh, you can configure all of your Radius uh, information right here within the BNG Manager. Uh, we don't have the ours uh, set up yet, but you can see some of the capabilities and uh, names. We do support uh, clusters of Radius servers, so you can have multiples uh, that can be either uh, primary, secondary, or round robin in a load balancing um, scenario. Same thing with accounting. They can be the same radius server, or you could have a different cluster of accounting servers. This is uh, entirely up to uh, uh, your network design. And then the same thing for your disconnect message uh, COA. You can identify which servers uh, are allowed to send those uh, disconnect messages. In some cases, it will be radius. It may also be a billing system. Uh, all of your IP pools are managed from the IP pools menu. And here we've set up a local pool uh, just for the use within our network. But you can set up multiple different IP pools, uh, maybe for different segments of your network, different VLANs, uh, different types of uh, subscribers, etc. And we do a lot within the BNG with configuration templates. And uh, on the template menu right here is where you'll manage those. One of the key templates we call domain. <clears throat> and 
uh, you can see uh, that we map that then to the authentication template we set up uh, in a different menu. Uh, details about which ports you're binding to uh, and <coughs> IP uh, pools that you're going to associate with that template. Um, you can then set up IPOE templates and templates essentially by each type of subscriber that you have um, and you know, provide all the different attributes uh, associated with that. Now in this uh, environment, we've only got uh, IPOE, but you can see it's easy to uh, add uh, a PPPOE template to support that. And we have other types of uh, subscriber uh, connections as well. CGNAT is managed by your NAT rules uh, menu, where we can set uh, the type of CGNAT that we're going to provide, which IP pools we're going to associate with that um, NAT, and our port maps for any uh, you know, special cases that we uh, need to. We also support dynamic rules and static rules um, to make sure that uh, everything is supported uh, through your CGNAT environment. Next is the router menu uh, to manage <clears throat> any of your VRFs uh, and your BGP routing and OSPF routing, etc. We don't have that set up here, but you can see uh, all of the uh, capabilities that uh, are possible within the BNG Manager config menu. And lastly is the monitoring uh, configuration. We do support SNMP um, for monitoring and uh, traps. Uh, we have our own uh, MIB file that uh, you can, um, you know, get and um, you know load within your uh, SNMP monitoring environment. Uh, in addition to standard Ethernet uh, and router MIBs that we support. On the syslog side, you can set up uh, an external syslog server as well. Uh, pretty straightforward uh, for that. So that's a view of the configuration menu and. Uh, Again, uh, for the other menus and uh, other operations of the BNG Manager, hope you'll go back and look at the uh, BNG Manager demo for the operations and overview. Thanks for your time.